Hey, what is up guys and welcome to my channel and for a new build for Stranger Paradise. Summoner is by far my favourite job in the game and I just happened to be looking back at my summoner build that I made when the Wanderer of the Rift DLC was released and my god looking back at that build now I was just horrified. Looking at just how bad the damage Bahamut does in the labyrinth was just hard to watch. Not even hitting numbers in the thousands. I just had to remake a build for Bahamut after everything that I've learned throughout the course of this DLC. And what I have now is probably a build that really showcases what Bahamut is one of the strongest jobs in the game. Just so you guys have a comparison, here's a look at the fire from my previous build with the scorpion. Yeah, it is taking way too long and that is even at floor 52. Now here's a look at the same fight with the scorpion at floor 100. Yeah, it doesn't even stand a chance. It can kill bosses faster and more efficiently than even the Dark Knight and the Breaker. There are absolutely no weaknesses in this build. Whether an enemy is strongly resistant to physical or magic attacks, it wouldn't matter at all. I laugh so hard when the Kraken shows up. Literally two sets of attacks and he is gone. This time around, we use every single tool at Bahamas disposal, including his amazing Mega Flare, the Flare Breath and his totally ridiculous melee attacks. There's quite a lot to go over for this build. So let's get right into it. As our main class, we're going to be using the High Summoner and for our secondary, we will be using the Lunarian class on the Tyrant. Tyrant is going to be our main source of magic damage for our melee attacks. Being able to imbue your weapon with an element will add magic damage to all of your attacks. This will come in really useful when you switch over into your Summoner. As Bahamut will have his attacks imbued with the elements as well. It doesn't just apply to only your weapons. Plus you can still chain cancel to reach max MP at the beginning of the fights. Very useful if you are doing missions outside of the labyrinth and you have access to the cubes. You can very quickly chain cancel multiple times and then restore all of your MP. As for the affinities, the cyclic warrior at 600% is super useful to have. It is not very important for this bullet in particular, but it's never bad to proc all your soul shield effects on library activation since we almost always have Bahamut as our summon blessing. We then have 600% on our Void Knight for getting that amazing haste skill whenever we are above 4 bars of MP. We will also get reduced cost on our command abilities as well as increased potency on our MP recovery effects. 400% on our Voker so we get a good bit of passive MP regen. But what's more useful is the fact that you can cure status effects with potions. It is super useful especially if you find yourself hit with silence. You can very quickly switch into your Tyrant and use a potion to cure yourself from everything. Then another good one to have is 250% on our Samurai for bonus damage on Chain Cancel and then finally 120% on our Summoner which is what we use to boost our max MP on Chain Cancelling. On your gear pieces, it's important to have Soul Burst MP Recovery as well as Soul Shield MP Recovery and Action Ability MP Cost. Then any other stats that can reduce the cost of your command abilities will be good to have. On your accessory, it's good to have Inky Envy. This skill will allow any of your attacks to pierce the enemy's weakness. Attacks like your Mega Flare are non-elemental and can't easily get your MP back with those attacks. With Inky Envy you can make use of the Lancet ability to gain your MP and also to increase damage with all of your attacks. Here is a look at the Master Points for the Tyrant. Now let's have a look at the summoner. We are using the high summoner class and this will give us access to the flare breath which we can use at the end of our combos. Just like your mega flares, your flare breath is also a non-elemental attack. So the inky envy from your tyrant will be really important to regain EMP if you want to continuously spam this move. Unlike my previous build which focused on a lot on strength and damage on melee attacks as possible, with this build it's more focused on both strength and intellect. With the addition of intellect, all of our magic attacks like our Mega Flares and Flare Breath will be insanely powerful. Also Intellect will boost your melee attacks since you are imbuing your weapons with Tyrant. And Strength in general will boost all of your melee and physical attacks. For the affinities we start with getting 600% on our Cyclic Warrior. This will proc all of our Soul Shield effects whenever we activate Lightbringer. In order to use your Mega Flares consistently, you will need to activate your Lightbringer so you can use up your MP and stack up your Mega Flares. Without the 600% on your Cyclic Warrior, you will lose a lot of your max MP to use your Mega Flares. Since we proc a lot of our social effects, 
We were only using very little amounts of MP with this. And what's even better is the fact that we used the Leviathan Blessing. This will increase the amount of MP recover from Soul Shield and Soul Burst. We have 400% on our Black Mage. This will give us bonus intellect stacks to our abilities. And then the main one being, we can increase our max MP with all the magic damage that we deal. You can just see how quickly you can regain all of your lost MP with just your melee attacks only. Cause you do so much damage, it's just ridiculous how easy it is. 400% on our Void Knight. This will give us increased potency on our MP recovery effects. And then our main one is reduced cost on our command abilities. Since Lightbringer is a command ability, it's really necessary to have the skill. 400% on our Breaker, so we get increased strength and bonus damage whenever we soul burst enemies. 400% on our Dark Knight, so we get increased damage when the enemies are targeting us. And also having all of our near death effects active all the time. We then have 400% on our Summoner. This will reduce the constant MP drain while you have your Summoner active. And then we'll get to increase the duration of all of our buffs whenever we soul shield. Since we proc all of our soul shield effects on Lightbringer, we will never have to proc our command abilities more than once. We will be using Lightbringer many times in a fight, and with this, none of our buffs will ever be removed. Those affinities are super important. And as for what you will need to focus on with your allies and your monsters in the Labyrinth, are these five. The Tonberry, Deep, Aether, Behemoth, and Jester. Use Tonberry to increase your breaker affinity to 600%, so we get increased strength on Soul Shield. Use Deep to increase our strength and all of the physical damage that we deal. We have Behemoth for more Soul Shield MP recovery, increased affinity for Summoner so we can reach 600%. This will boost the potency of our Summon Blessing. We use Aether to increase our intellect and the magic damage dealt. We get increased Black Mage affinity so we can reach 600% so we get bonus intellect stat. Then finally we have Jester to increase our damage dealt during Lightbringer and we also increase our affinity for the Sage to 160%. This is for increased MP recovery on Soul Shield, and it also offers a good amount of Intellect and Spirit. We get more affinity on Void Knight, so we can reach 600%. This will allow us to have the Haste skill active on the Summoner as well. That is all you will need to focus on regarding the monsters in the Labyrinth. On your gear pieces, make sure you get as much as you can on Summon Damage and improve your effect on Enchant. You can also get combo ability damage for whatever weapon that you are using. I didn't go for the combo damage bonuses on your weapons, as everyone could be using different weapons on their summoner. So just to keep it simple, I went with the improved effect on enchant, so no matter what weapon you are using, it will be fine. Then for the other stats that you will need, get as much as you can on strength, spirit, intellect or even stamina. Get as much as you can for those stats as they are very important, as Muhammad can take advantage of every single stat in the game. For your accessory, we will have Lionheart for invincibility to all attacks during Lightbringer. You can get this from Gilgamesh in the Labyrinth. For your command abilities, we have Mighty Strikes and Lancet Combo. This will give us increased damage and a lot of MP recovery. Then we have Lunatic for faster overall attack speed. Here's a look at the Master Points for the Summoner. That is all you will need for this build. It is totally the fastest boss killer in the game. You can just see even on floor 100 how quickly Bahamut can shoot through the entire health bars. Compared to my previous build, this is just on another level. The damage from your melee attacks, especially the ender ability which is the dual cross, you can use this ability after your first normal attack as well as your forward attack. Once you get hang of this loop, you'll be just fine. The reason it does so much damage is because of its multiple hits on startup and the final ender as well. You can see that the damage numbers can't even keep up because of how quickly all the attacks happen. And all of them are hitting in the tens of thousands. Even the Warrior Light, who is still by far the most annoying boss in the game, can be taken out very easily. Lightbringer can be activated so many times that there is no way you could ever die in any of these fights. Never hesitate to activate it, you will always have more than enough MP to use it as many times as you want. Hope you guys enjoyed the build. It is a vast improvement to my previous summoner build and one of the strongest builds that you can use to take on the labyrinth. Let me know what you guys think of this. I would love to hear from you all. I will catch you all next time.